shows. I'll assassinate them. They play murderers. They play undercover agents. All they are is empty suits, every last one of them. I used to love them as an actor. No more. No more Johnny Depp. No more Johnny Depp. Here's another. A judge blocks deportation of more than 100 Iraqi Christians. Now, on the face of it, you say, oh, why are they deporting Iraqi Christians? Bad. They should deport Iraqi Muslims. Because Trump Christians on a deportation list, listen, they've all committed felonies in this country. First of all, the, uh, the uh, crimes they committed were major. They all have criminal convictions. And now, of course, the ACLU is making believe that they care about Christians, which, of course, they don't. The second thing is, is that these Iraqi nationals, Christian or otherwise, and we don't even know if they're Chaldean Christians, can convert to Christianity upon arrival, even though they're Shiite Muslims before they get here. And orders, are you listening to me? Shootings, killings, murders, rapes. So oh, they're deporting Christians. Who, who said all Christians are good? Where would that come from? You can wear a cross and cut someone's throat, too? You can wear a cross and hold up a bank. You can wear them out of the country. We don't need them. Let's think to look at. 35 extremely sexist ads that you should see. They're, they're interesting. Sh to show you how women were portrayed by advertising men during the Mad Men years. Every woman is a fainting wolf, a fainting wallflower. Everyone is weak, emotional, uh, needing a man, a strong man to guide her. It's really great. I mean, I grew up on that stuff. No wonder I'm warped. It's very hard to overcome sexism. I've got to tell you right now, I've made an attempt to it. I mean, I love my wife, I love my daughter, but the thing is, I must have some of those sexist tendencies. I've got to admit it. I look at these, these pictures, I didn't realize what they were doing brainwashing me. 35 extremely sexist ads that you should see. So it starts with a man in a suit, of course, a suit and tie. There's the woman over the stove with a hot pan, something's burning. She's crying and he's saying, don't worry, darling, you didn't burn the beer and it's an ad for a beer of the time. Can you believe this? You go down the list, it's shocking. Allow, don't allow, click to allow. Go. I, they get you so trapped with these things, I don't bother. You, you get the picture. There's another one with a woman underneath a man's shoe. It says where she belongs. Days in this country were crazy in many ways. I remember there were ads before my time that I read about years later in the 1930s, before I was born, that it showed a doctor, you know, a stethoscope and a white outfit. It says, more doctors smoke Chesterfields than any other brand. That's all. No calls. Dead in the water. Friday. Let's go down the list now on MichaelSavage.com. My Twitter address is at a Savage Nation. Big deal. Dr. Michael Savage, Ph.D. Facts on Global Temperature. I'm bored already of reading it. I'm, I'm, I feel I'm tired today. I know why. You know why I'm tired today? I had a really long day yesterday. I had three wonderful people came out from the corporation who I was expecting. It was a good meeting. They were great guys. That was another hour. I was exhausted by the end of the day. I felt a sore throat coming on. I've used for years to stop a sore throat before it becomes major. I have a little, you know, I have my, my methods of doing it. And it's based upon... 40 years of being an expert in nutrition, herbal medicine, homeopathic medicine, and all of it has helped me get to this point in my life. It helped my family enormously, by the way. I won't give you all of the ingredients I use. It's not important. But I ended it with a tip that a friend of mine from who fought in World War II told me. I don't know if he's still alive. He must be not. He himself was in the Battle of the Bulge and survived by pulling himself into a dead cow cutting the guts open of a dead cow and crawling into that mess during a German artillery bombardment. Can you believe to survive an artillery bombardment? This is a frail man from New York City. You'd never guess, like an accountant type. He doesn't drink. But he gave me a great hint that I use with all of my uh, vitamins and herbs. You gargle scotch on the back of your throat and in the zinc lozenges and the special herbal spray that I have. The only thing is I don't spit the scotch out. And then I repeat ad libitum. That means according to pleasure. Now, I learned, I learned the phrase ad libitum when I was a 13-year-old pharmacist's assist, assistant. Illegally, of course. I didn't know. Don't blame me. A pharmacist hired me to give me less than minimum wage when the going rate was a buck and a quarter. 
I actually filled the prescriptions. I hope I didn't kill anybody in, in Queens. I, I mean, how hard was it to count out a pill? I was an intelligent kid. He sat there eating the lunch his wife sent him. Nicest guy in the world. He'd lean back. I'd relax at lunch. I take the RX and fill it out. out. No, 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 no. no one bought. Then one day a New York City health inspector came in. Let me tell you what happened about the ad libitum when I returned on the Savage Nation. Two eight nine twenty six forty six or SwissAmerica.com. NYU when he was studying Marxism one oh one. He stared at me through the glass over there in the pharmacy area. The pharmacist was eating his meal and dozing off. I swear to God, it, it sounds like a cartoon. He was dozing. He knocked off a veal parmesan that the wife sent him in a nice porcelain dish. They didn't read. No, I'm just watching. You're just filling out prescriptions, huh? I said, yes. What did I know? Bring the pharmacist. No anger, no rage. Look, I'm sorry. There's a problem here. And I said, the work thing for the kid. And the guy says, I have not. I gave the kid a job. He said, well, you know, I need to know how old he is. And so he got fine. I felt so bad. 